So Kodak Black's producer airs out Meg Thee Stallion after she tweets, why be better? So this has been going on social media for a couple days now. So Meg Thee Stallion put out a couple of tweets. Uh, they were like, why be better? Some about that ratio shit. Everybody talks about ratio, ratio, and another tweet, right? So I guess it's like Kodak Black's producer to believe that she was just because him. He, you know, he kind of he kind of went at her a little bit. So we're gonna read that story down below. So there's a fan base that is dedicated as NBA Young Boys. Why be better turned into a marketing catchphrase for the rappers after the outpour of memes and troll accounts that litter the exact phrase on a particular every other rapper's comment section, including Meg The Stein. The Houston Hottie fired back at the trolls on Twitter yesterday, tweeting, why be better, and you fell off, period. So these are like typical things that people say, like the article says, to other rappers under their post. Why be better, you're done, uh, you fell off, you need to retire, ratio, ratio, like that's what they do, right? Everybody's been talking about it. Jack Harlow been talking about it. Everybody has been talking about this whole why be better situation on Instagram. So Meg tweeted out these, why be better, you fell off, if you're an op, don't tweet me, this is not a group project. The time of the tweets arrived days after Kodak Black called her out again for the drive the boat phrase, which Yak popularized following a viral clip. Given Yak's previous tension with young boys, it seemed like a few other people perceived Meg's tweets as some sort of shade towards the Broward County rapper. So I don't, t- to be honest, right? Okay, Meg probably doesn't tweet that much. I don't really see her tweet that much. But when you see these tweets, where do you actually get the notion that these are directed directly at Kodak? Especially over the past couple months, Kodak has been actively saying that him and young boy are good. He's been actually saying that they're going to go on tour together when he gets out. They're going to make millions of dollars. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. Like, he's actively promoting that they're good now. So, I don't know what would make anybody believe that these are directed towards Kodak, except for media wants something to talk about. People want to put insert themselves to be talked about. That's the only reason I could see that someone would look at these tweets and be like, oh, that's directed directly at Kodak. And I get it, the timing. He did the academics interview. And he brought up the dry the boat thing. I mean, I don't really think that's such a huge, major, big deal. But maybe it got into Mexican, maybe it didn't. But I, I still believe that these are not directed at Kodak. So, producer Dyricky or Derek something, who's responsible for many of Kodak's hits, including Killing the Rats, took to Instagram where he put Meg on blast for the series of tweets that she sent out. The producer said that he uh, has sat in her writing camps before bashing her ability as an MC. So this is what he said. At the Stallion. Been in your writing camps with all your go-to writers. You were definitely not the talent behind any of your records. Go cling on that bottle and recut that verse one more time. You didn't match the reference they wrote for you. So I don't, as a man, like, I, I, and I'm not saying that men can't critique women. That's, that's uh, I critique people in here all the time. But as a man, I don't get the, the point of inserting yourself into that situation, especially when there's no clear-cut evidence, there's no, uh, there's no this, no that. It's all speculation that she is discussing Kodak Black. Now, I don't know if he got excited. He's seen the blogs posting it. The blogs were saying it was about Kodak. He got excited. Like, okay, I'm going to insert myself in here. I'm going to say, I've been in your writer camps. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. Meg Thee Stallion has made it seem like she doesn't have writers. So to people, this might be like a revelation. Oh, my God, she has writers. Because if you don't remember, she was going live with Nicki Minaj, and they were laughing at people who use writers to write their raps, right? Now, I'm from Houston. Um, Meg Thee Stallion has been around for a while. And she's been known to be a, a good, like, freestyle in the car, whatever, whatever. That's not to say that people didn't write those. But I tend to believe that she wrote a lot of her records coming up. Now, maybe now she got some writers. Because, you know, when you get on, the people, they want a certain sound. They want you to make this certain kind of music. Shake that ass, pop that coochie, go extra hard in that. So maybe she does have a team of writers to write music like that. But to me, still, it doesn't. it's not an indictment on her. Because historically, most female rappers have had writers, right? So it's not like it's not some detrimental thing that Meg Thee Stallion must now face due to these allegations from this guy. So um, my only thing with this is, as people, where do we get the, like, wh- where do we get the information that, okay, this is about this. Let's go full force behind it. She's talking shit about Kodak. That's my only interest in this thing. Like, where do you find the interest, where do you find, the, where do you even get it from that this is about Kodak Black, right? So, oh, I want to read this part, I read this part. Megan addressed allegations of using Ghost Riders back in 2019 after Wolf Talia claimed that she went uncredited for her efforts on Simon Says. Megan and Juicy J issued statements denying the use of external songwriters for the song. So, she been had a little ghostwriting claims, but let, let's be honest. In 2021, nobody really gives a fuck. Nobody, people don't even value the music like that anyway. So to, to 
to place value on people using ghostwriters more than we actually value listening to music, I don't think that's even a relevant part. I know rap is rap, and if you want to be the top rapper, you probably got to write your shit. But overall, as far as just musically, and let's just listen to music, what's our favorite song this week? Nobody really cares too much about being a ghostwriter. I think, honestly, in my opinion, Kodak Black's producer wanted to feel like he was defending Kodak. Kodak is obviously going through something. We see him put up the tweets. Everybody thought it was a little bit suicidal. He just issued, or his lawyers just issued something to a judge so that he could finish out his treatment at a facility outside of Florida because it'd be better for his mental health and this and that. Which prayers up for Kodak. Hopefully, you know, you don't want nobody to go through shit like that. Mental health is a crazy thing. But for the producer to jump out the window, I think that's a little bit wild. I think, and I don't even like using the word clout, Chasey, but I think he uses a perfect opportunity because he has credibility, right? He is a producer for Kodak Black. Now, I don't know the Killing the Rat song. When they said hits, I thought they was going to say like Z, uh, ZZ or whatever other hits Kodak Black got. But they said that one. If you're a Kodak fan, let me know if Killing the Rats is a hit song or is some shit like an album cut off one of his projects. So let me know. Um, but I think he just wanted attention. A lot of people do that in the industry, right? <clears throat> they see a, a topic... They're tied to the artist in some way that the topic is directed towards, allegedly. We don't even know these about Kodak. So they'll use opportunities to speak out because they know the blogs will pick that up because you're directly tied to that person that these are allegedly about. And I feel like that's what this Derek guy did. But let me know what you think. Uh, I feel like Meg, she just gets unfairly treated. I ain't going to lie to you because of the whole Tory Lane shit. I, I speak about this all the time. But people believe Tory. They don't fuck, they don't fuck with Meg. I'm not really going to get into my views on it. If you haven't seen the videos about me talking about it, Go back and you'll see my views on the Tory Lane Meg Stallion shit. But she does get that external flack due to the fact that she's in that situation with somebody like Tory Lanez. I want to read the comments because comments are kind of telling sometimes to see how other people view this as well. So finally, someone admitted what people have been assuming. She's an industry plant with industry help and with writing camps. See, I don't get the, <clears throat> like I said, like I said, as a person from Houston, Meg the Stallion was doing like freestyle shit <clears throat> years ago before she got popping. Years ago. So it do look like she grinded to get to where she's at. And I would just assume like an industry playing somebody who just like you never hear from them. They just started rapping like two months ago and now they're hot. That's how I consider an industry plant, but whatever. She better not stop twerking industry plant. Damn, I was not expecting 40 comments. I really hate these female rappers. If just her alone is a huge gap in rap, she feels it. Truth, there's a handful of too many fagels telling you to like her. I don't know what that means. A man... Still crying over a man, a lot of undercover SF for sure. Whoa, Meg. The, I mean, okay, I can't really read that one. But anyways, <clears throat> it just seemed like people don't really fuck with Meg. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so every single time that I post. See you guys next time. It's your buddy, friend. Peace.